I want to talk about fixing unit tests for SQL, particularly SQL that's been generated by DBT. If you've never heard of DBT before, then that's probably because your company still thinks that Excel is a database. If you're an analytics professional in 2025, it's probably the tool you use every day, maybe even before breakfast. But let's be honest, DBT is not exactly perfect, mainly when it comes to unit testing all that generated SQL code. Especially if you're a Python developer, you want to have an experience that's very much like PyTest. And it's precisely here where Marimo might help out a ton. Marimo notebooks are modern Python notebooks. And what's particularly relevant for this video is that these notebooks also have first class support for SQL and they also have native PyTest support. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a DBT setup that I've got running locally. And once those moving parts are all explained, I'll be able to show you two different ways that Marimo can really help you deal with the unit testing problem, both in SQL, but also in DBT specifically. All right. So uh, this is my big DBT project, and what you can see is that there are lots of files and folders. I'm going to dive into all of that, but the first thing I think I want to do is just maybe show you the data set that we will be dealing with. So I'm just going to start a Marimo notebook locally, and there we go. This is the notebook, and what I can do is I can go to the sidebar over here, and I can explore data sources. I can also add them, so I'm just going to go there, hit DuckDB, and I think I called it wow.duckdb. Find out in a moment, and let's also make it read only. Uh, the moment that I hit add here, by the way, you're going to notice that this new cell appears over here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and because all the dependencies were already installed, we can now see a database appear over here, and when you know it, there's lots of tables filled in. The table that I start with is this one, this wow logs one. So I can hit plus, then this uh, new cell appears over here. And notice, by the way, that this is a SQL cell. The output looks like a table of sorts. This is our data frame widget. If you were to do anything with a data frame, like a table or maybe polars or pandas, you get something that looks like this. And it's a widget, so there's like some interaction you can do here. In short, though, uh, this data set contains logs from a World of Warcraft server around 2007, 2009 ish, like that period of time. So I can see, for example, this one player over here was a uh, level 26 orc hunter. He was in Razor Friend Crawl and there's a daytime attached. The use case that I have for this data set is that this is something you might want to sessionize. You might want to determine when a player was playing and when they weren't playing. And if you know how long the sessions are on average or how long the longest session is, then that's useful information to maybe filter out bots. So that's the use case. I'm going to be using DBT to arrange all of this for me as I write some SQL. But know that this is the general use case. This is the main thing that we're going to keep in the back of our mind. And as we're going to see in a moment, uh, the only table that I started with in this database was this one, this while logs, these tables are actually generated automatically on my behalf. Um, and that's what I want to work towards next. So let's turn Marimo off. Let's exit the terminal, actually. And let's now start looking at some files. The files I want to talk about first can be found in the models folder, then in the staging folder. And then in this case, I want to have a look at the staging while logs with sessions SQL file. Now, technically, um, even though it says SQL here, this is not an actual SQL file. It's a template. And you can tell by these curly brackets that appear in a few places. The one on top here, for example, is going to indicate that this is going to be not a table, but a materialized view. And then down below over here, you can also see that the source is also something that we generate. It's not something you fill in manually by hand. This is something that can come out of a configuration file. There is a raw source, and in that raw source, there is this wow logs table. And this is the thing that we just saw in the Marimo notebook. So source raw, it just so happens that we have a sources.yaml file over here. And when you have a look at it, again, you can see the raw name appear. We see that we are also able to add a description, but we can also see that there's this one table called wow logs. And we're able to describe every single column. We're also able to add a description here. But you can imagine that a YAML file like this is something that DBT can then pick up to also do some checks to make sure that the SQL that we're writing here, uh, that that's actually possible. If I suddenly start asking for all sorts of column names that don't exist, then you can imagine a file like this is a way for me to also have a checking mechanism. Uh, DBT can start complaining then. Now, at the end over here, uh, you are going to notice that we have a final select statement at the bottom. And after that, we have a new source that we can refer to. We now have this staging wow logs with sessions that we can reference. And if I look at this uh, staging wow logs no bots file, then we can see that this is now materialized as a table. And we are referring to the aforementioned SQL file. This bit over here is now making a reference to this file over here. And, and again, inside, we will also find yet another YAML file. Uh, here we can see 
some information about all these intermediate tables that we're generating. Uh, one thing that's particularly cute is you're also able to say, hey, there are a few columns in here uh, that carry a description. These are columns that are being created. And we are able to also add a few testy thingies. So we're able to say, hey, this column over here, that's never null, check for that. But all these configuration files and all these SQL files, in the end, they will allow you to run dbt commands from the terminal. So let's start one up. Uh, let's go into this uh, wow analytics folder over here. And one thing I should be able to do is run dbt debug. And when I run this command, you're gonna notice it's picking up a couple of YAML files. It's making sure that the configuration makes sense. It's checking some connections, you know, it's doing a whole lot of good stuff. And another thing I should be able to do as well, I think, dbt run, and this is actually going to run all these commands for me. So you can see SQL tables being created. Some commands take a while longer than others, but we can see that we are now successfully completed. And this is also why when we opened up this DuckDB database in Remo, we saw those other tables. It's basically lots of SQL, lots of Jinja, lots of configuration files, all of which can go into something like GitHub. So that's all nice and central. Me and my colleagues can all work on the same file. So it solves a lot of problems. But now I wanna talk about the unit testing because it's great that this stuff is centralized, but I do wanna have very precise tests when it comes to doing data work. Now, in fairness, dbt does give you a mechanism to do unit tests. There is this test folder over here, and my impression is that you can add some SQL files there where basically the rule is if you run that SQL and there are no rows that come out, that counts as a test that passed, which, you know, it can get the job done maybe in a lot of cases, but I want to have something really specific. I want to have PyTest. I want to have a programming language at my disposal to describe what I want to have tested. I want to be really precise about it. And yeah, this test folder, again, you might get away with it, but can we come up with something that's maybe just a little bit more elegant? Okie dokie. So one way of going about this, right, is you um, have your DuckDB table over here, and let's uh, also make it clear. This is your production data, so to say. And whenever you run dbt, your production data will be in the state that it needs to be in. I'll just put a star there. This is what the dbt run command does. It basically takes your database and it runs all the SQL. And you might have, let's say, a raw table here somewhere, but you are gonna end up with multiple tables on this size, just maybe table uh, one, maybe all the way up to table N. You're gonna generate a bunch of these tables. Now, if you wanted to unit test this, one thing you could do is maybe do some hindsight checks. You could take all of these tables and you could check if there are properties that are met. The only downside of this approach is, of course, you are doing this on your production data. And these might be very big tables. You also don't want to waste compute resources. People are using this machine, right? So one way to circumvent that is you could say, well, let's not run this on production just yet. Let's have a test environment instead. And in the case of DuckDB, it's pretty easy. You can just have a DuckDB file locally that has a subset. You can still have dbt run run. You can still generate all of these tables that you would expect. And because this is running on a, let's say, subset with data sets that we understand, we can very clearly describe our expectations. And the reason why this is going to be quite elegant in Marimo is because, again, in Marimo, we have SQL support, as we saw before, but we can also add PyTests easily. And this is going to make it such that we can define a single Marimo notebook that's very easy to edit, very easy to inspect, but we can treat it as if it's a PyTest file for all intents and purposes. So that's something that I would like to show you uh, right now. Now, before showing you the Marimo notebook, uh, one thing that's good to point out now is that I do have this profiles.yaml file around. If you go to... Uh, my wow analytics folder over here that's where this uh, profiles.yaml file is and you can see that i've got these two environments i've got my development environment and i've got my production environment because i'm running everything locally here i have a local duckdb file and you could definitely imagine that maybe you're running this externally right if this is your actual production data set but the main thing that's important to do here if you're going to be running a lot of dbt yourself locally is that you do wanna make sure that by default, your target environment is your development environment. You don't wanna accidentally run code on your production, uh, so to say. So make sure you set this target to be development by default. Now, what you're gonna notice is that this notebook is a little bit special because uh, one thing you can do in Marimo is you can organize your notebook in a slightly different way. You don't just have the ability to scroll up and down. You can also have different columns. If you go to the user settings up above over here, then uh, that's something you can configure. When I have larger notebooks, that's definitely something I like to use. So uh, there you go. I've got some boilerplate in the first column. I'm making my database connection, basically similar to what you saw before. I've also got a SQL cell above over here that I can play with. But uh, yeah, this is, for all intents and purposes, basically boilerplate. The real exciting stuff is happening here. Because what's happening here? I've got a cell below that is running a SQL statement. And what you're going to see is I'm able to do something like select star from 
staging wow logs no bots that's a table that shouldn't have any bots in it and what you're able to do is I'm, I'm hiding the output in this case but what i am doing is i'm saying the output of this sql statement that has to go into a polar's data frame you can specify a output variable down below over here and that means that i now have a polar's data frame that i can refer to and that's what i'm doing in this cell over here now the way that this cell works is in Marimo, whenever you have a cell that only has functions, all of which start with test underscore, then Marimo is going to assume that this is a cell that just contains unit tests and that we want to run that with PyTest. And in this case, I have two kinds of tests. I have a test that says, hey, I have a couple of users from which I know for sure that they're bots. And I've also got a couple of users for which I'm sure they are normal humans. So that's why uh, test bots are caught and test normies are kept. I can put in a couple of user IDs like so. Uh, if you're familiar with PyTest, you can easily parameterize functions this way. And as you can see down below over here, this is all running like PyTest. The reason why all this works is I have DuckDB pointing to my test database. And from there, I can just run SQL code as I see fit and then use the Polar's data frames that come out of it to test for properties. And in this case, yeah, I am testing uh, the shape, you could say, but I can do more than just this. I can do complex joins. I'm also able to bring in maybe machine learning libraries. I'm able to do lots of crazy stuff that I'm able to do with Python because I'm actually using Python for my unit testing here. And that's just going to give me way more flexibility compared to doing everything with SQL. So, so this would be a very convenient way for you to test your SQL. However, one downside of this approach is that this does require you to have a test database. And for a lot of situations, it's actually perfectly doable. But if you really wanna do a unit test, maybe a more preferable way will be to do something like, hey, I've got a Polar's data frame over here in memory, and I have a SQL file right there. I wanna pretend that that one Polar's data frame went through that one SQL file, and then I wanna do some checks on the output of that. Kind of look at the SQL file as a stateless function, if it were. And for that, you can actually use another trick. This is a trick that will mainly work in DuckDB, unfortunately, but because DuckDB is getting more popular for good reason, I figured it would be fun to show as well. I have a function over here. It's called run SQL with mocks. And let me try and explain what it does. What I've got over here is a SQL file on disk, but one that is evaluated. So all those brackets from Jinja, they're gone and they are filled in with the appropriate values. That SQL file, by the way, can be found if you go to this wow analytics folder in this target subfolder over here. You gotta go to compile. In this case, you gotta go to staging. And here you are gonna find all that SQL that has been evaluated on your behalf. And that's great for debugging, but in this case, that's also a place where I can just grab the SQL file. So that's where all of this comes from. But now, again, this is going to be running in DuckDB. And then what you could theoretically do is you could say, well, let's just take a string like this and let's replace it with, let's say, another string, mock underscore one. And then I've got another one like that down below over here. These are the input data frames. I'm going to call this mock underscore two. And you can do this with basic string interpolation. And in fact, that's what I'm doing in the code over here. You can see the SQL replace being called right there. But if you have a connection, in memory to DuckDB, you can also call another thing. Right after you've updated the SQL, you can also tell that connection to register a data frame. And that can be a Polar's data frame also in memory. And you can say, look, uh, I'm replacing the table reference with this variable name, this mock name. And then I'm saying, look, that uh, variable name over there, let's just uh, inject that with this data frame all in memory. Effectively, and there you have it, effectively what you're able to do is you're able to now generate a function like this where you can pass in the SQL that you had on disk and then you're also able to pass a dictionary where oh whenever you see this reference replace it with this data frame instead and then users and stats uh, that is something that I've got down below over here this is a, a Polar's data frame I've got a second one down below over here you can do this manually you could also make a folder with some CSV files if you don't feel like doing this in line in a notebook but there we go that one SQL file but here's the cool bit that SQL file now actually kind of became more like a stateless function than anything else. And yeah, I'm doing a bit of string interpolation, but you can see the actual output that comes out over here. So again, I could do something like out equals, I could do something like assert out shape zero equals one, just a test and basic mock. But again, the main thing that's really awesome here is that you're able to turn dbt generated SQL into a proper unit test that really runs like a normal Python function. That's the really cool bit. And not only can you run 
this as a SQL test inside of a Remo notebook. Uh, another thing that's also good to know is that Remo notebooks under the hood are just Python files. So one thing I can do now is I can call pytest, and what I can now do is I can point to this notebooks folder to the checks file. That's the name of the notebook, by the way. I can run it, and you're gonna see it is actually running pytest on my behalf. And some checks take a bit longer. Uh, let's run this in verbose mode just for good measure. Uh, but there you go. Uh, test bots are caught, test normies are kept, uh, test the basic mock. This is a simple folder that you can just add to your, you can add this to, uh, you know, GitHub Actions or whatnot. You can also name this test underscore, such that PyTest automatically detects it. That would maybe also be an interesting idea, but uh, the thing that's really neat about this is you still have a notebook environment as well. So if for whatever reason a test fails and you'd like to debug it, Remo is a proper Python notebook, so you can also add charts. There's also some LLM support to help you debug if that's something you're into. But most of all, and this is coming from the perspective of a person that's it's not really a SQL person. I'm definitely more of a Python guy than a uh, SQL dude. I will write SQL, but it's not necessarily what I would call home. But by having a remote notebook, I do get some of those PyTest benefits that I'm so used to. And those are also the things I never really wanted to give up. But thanks to Marimo, I'm actually able to merge the two, which is, you know, great. Now, hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, uh, a like and subscribe goes a long way. Thanks. And if you want to play around with this code, just uh, check the show notes. There's a GitHub repository that you can go ahead and copy. Thanks for listening. And if there's any questions, you can also leave any comments down below. See you next time.